Good morning, Gates family. Thanks so much for joining us for church online today. Let's worship together. Good morning, Gates. Join in worship with us today.
You will always be more than enough for me. Nothing's going to stop the plans you made. Nothing's going to take your love away. You will always be more than enough for me. You will always be more than enough for me. You will always be more than enough for me, Jesus. Nothing's going to stop the plans you made. Nothing's going to take your love away. You will always be more than enough for me. You will always be more than enough. You will always be more than enough for me. Nothing's going to stop the plans you made. Nothing's going to take your love away. You will always be more than enough for me. Doesn't matter what I feel. Doesn't matter what I see. My hope will always be in your promises to me. Now I'm casting out all fear, for your love has set me free. My hope will always be in your promises to me. Doesn't matter what I your promises to me. Now I'm casting out all fear, for your love has set me free. My hope will always be in your promises to me. Jesus, your promises to me. Those are two of my personal favorite songs, so I hope that those ministered to you this morning. If this is your first time joining us online, we want to connect with you. Please go to our website and click on the page, contact us, tell us your name, and even how you found us. You can also use our website to submit a prayer request. I know our prayer ministry team personally, and I know that they would love to come in agreement with you for any need that you have during this time. I'm excited to encourage you in your giving today and your tithes. Uh, the other day I was reading in 1 Peter chapter 5 where it says that we do have an enemy that roams about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And if you're like me, I kind of wonder, you know, who is it that he may or may not devour? So the Lord took me back to Malachi where our traditional tithe verse is. And it says in Malachi that if you bring your tithes into the storehouse, that he will rebuke the devourer for your sake. So to me, that tells me that as a tither, that the devil may not devour me because God has already rebuked that devourer. And it reminds me of that little emoji with the red circle and the line through it that that's kind of stamped on my chest. So when the enemy is roaming around me, trying to devour me, he sees that I am a tither and that the devourer has already been rebuked on my behalf. I for one am so grateful for those promises as a tither and as a seed sower, just like we sang earlier in the song about the promises of God, especially during this COVID time. You know, so many people aren't working, so many people are, including me, you know, part of my business has been shut down during this time, but I am continuing with what I have in my hands to tithe and to sow seed, and God has been faithful 
to his promises and he has been faithful to me. So I hope that encourages you as a tither today, or if you're not a tither today, I hope that just sparks a desire and an interest in you today. So if you'll be paying your tithe or sowing a seed today, we have a couple options for you to do that. First, you can go to our website at gatesofthecity.org and click on the Give tab. You can also text to give. In the message area, you can text Gates of the City and in the number section to 77977. And you can also mail in a check to the address on your screen. So grab your Bible and your notebook and get ready for the word from Pastor Bert. Good morning. This Sunday morning here right at the beginning of the month of May. Man, go figure that. We're excited about being here, but what we're really excited about is that the governor of Texas has began slowly to open up our state and has given the go ahead for churches to meet again. So uh, be watching our website and our social media sites and um, uh, with information about when we're fixing, you know, to have our first live service here in our building here at Gates of the City. We're excited about it, it's coming. Just be watching, we just have to make sure that everything is in line because there's a a lot of regulations that are going with opening and we gotta make sure that we're doing what we need to be doing and helping to, yeah, protect people, but yet, you know, honor those in authority that have asked us to do this because, you know, at the end of the day, it's not just about you or me, it's about all the people around us and that we come in contact with. So. But, you know, but we're so excited about the fact that we are going to be back in service together and that God has seen us through everything that we've been through over the last really probably six weeks, I guess, here uh, here in Kerrville and how we've been affected by it. It's been over about the last six to seven weeks. And so we're just excited to get back to somewhat of normality, kind of a new normal but uh, we're just excited that things are advancing and, and, and taking place. So today, I wanna to share with you just a real simple word um, entitled, God is for me. God is for me. He, he's not against me, he's for me. Uh, God is on my side, he's my helper, but remember this, God is never against you. I don't care what things look like. Even when it seems like that there's something going on in your life or that you're faced with something where it it feels like to you that God is against you, no way. No way. God doesn't do against. He only only does for. (laughs) He, he, He doesn't do bad things to people. When something bad happens, it's never God. There's not a bad bone in his body. There's nothing in his nature uh, that resonates bad. Everything in God is good. It's only good and it'll always be good. So I'm telling you today, God is for you and he's not against you. I'll just say it like this. It's impossible for God to be against you. Well, what a lot of times people don't realize is that You know, things in our life that we do sets us up for bad things. The Bible's real clear about it, uh, that what you sow is what you reap in every way. In your actions, in your attitude, the things you say, uh, in your finances, with your health. You know, you sow a lot of junk into your body, you're going to reap, you know, bad health as a result of it. I mean... As long, the Bible says, as long as heaven and earth is intact and it's intact, so is seed time and then harvest time. So everything that happens in life is a result of what we sow, everything. I mean, maybe not, maybe not directly, but indirectly the things that we sow and even at times things that other people in our life have, have sown, you know, parents or grandparents. There's things that get passed down to us generationally that come to us. But, but through the blood of Jesus and what he accomplished for us, when we really believe that, it will cut off and nullify anything that has tried to be attached to our life. So when you were born physically, you were born one time, but when you were born a second time, 
Now that's the lineage that you take on is through the blood of Jesus to the Father who is the original creator of your life. And I just tell you this, you want to be reaping from the Father and not reaping from what other people have done. We don't want that. And, and through God and in our relationship with God and really believing in Him, it helps to stop generational curses. It helps to stop the bad from happening in our life. I mean, there's bad things that happen all around us. I'm just telling you in the verses of Scripture I'm going to read to, to you today that are true. If they're really true, then the bad that happens around you doesn't have to come on you and overtake you. You know, I, I know with some people that's hard to believe, but if God said it, then it's true and it's doable in our lives. We just have to choose to believe it. My part is, your part is, that we have to believe that God is that real for us. So I'm going to read a few verses of Scripture that just back up what I'm saying to you. First one is found uh, in Psalm 118 in verse 6. It says, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? What can anything in life do that God who's on my side overtake me? What in life can overtake me when I know God is on my side? When I'm not in fear of what's out there that appears to be at times getting the best of, it, uh, of me or trying to work its way or maneuver its way into my life. If I believe God's on my side, there's nothing out there that can overcome or overtake your life. Nothing. The Lord is for me among those who help me. Therefore, I shall see my desire on those who hate me. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put your confidence in man. Putting your trust and your confidence in God will always produce. But again, and I'll say this in probably a dozen more times just in this little short message that I'm bringing, you have to develop a belief system that says, you know what, God's on my side. No matter what this looks like, that looks like, what this appears to be, no, God is on my side. He's my helper. He, he's there to protect me. I'm putting my trust in Him and not in the way other things look. And as you do that, it produces every single time. God is faithful to his word. No word from God. This is, this is a verse of scripture in Luke chapter 1 and verse 37 in the NIV. No word from God will ever fail. So if I've got God's word on it, and I know that that's true no matter what it looks like, no matter how long it takes to see the manifestation, no word from God will ever fail. Mm. What a, what, I mean, I don't know about you, but to me that is amazing news and I've learned to believe that and it's brought such peace and calmness and a life that is liberated and free from fear that's the life I live today I didn't say that fear doesn't come at me I'm just saying I believe that God is for me and not against me and if he's on my side what can anybody else do that's going to cause natural things to overtake my life they're not it may appear to be there may be some difficulties that I'll walk through but a couple of verses I'm going to read right now are going to cover all of that all of it. And actually, the next passage is Psalm 23. There's, there's not a greater passage of Scripture to bring peace and confidence to your life, to your life, peace and confidence to your life, that God is who He says He is, and He'll do what He said He'll do. It's Psalm 23, and I'm going to actually read all six verses, and I'm going to read it in the New Living Translation. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. Wow. There, you know, uh, in this world that we're living in now, in the United States of America, I don't know what it's at right now, but upwards of between 20 and 30 million people are, have filed for unemployment or out of work. Uh, it appears like lots and lots of people don't have enough, but when the Lord is your shepherd, when the Lord is on your side and you know it, uh, he said, you'll have all you need. And that's the confidence God wants you to have in Him. Not in other people and what everybody else thinks and says and does, but He wants your confidence to be in the fact that He said, you have enough. He's your shepherd, but you've got to believe that what He says here is really true. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams, and He renews my strength. 
I believe that's every day, every day. When I'm turning to him every day and not to the news and reports of other people and things, when I turn to God every day, he renews my strength, makes me strong. He guides me along a right path, bringing honor to his name. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I tell you what, for some, you know, the time that we're in right now over the last, you know, month or two here in this country and, and around the planet, it's been some of the darkest days for people. You know, it's been some really dark days for people. But he said, even though we walk through the darkest day, David said here, I will not be afraid. For you are close beside me. In other words, you are on my side. I will not be afraid. Though I walk through the darkest valley, I'll not be afraid. Why? Because you are close beside me. You are on my side. Your rod and your staff, they protect and they comfort me. That rod represents the Word of God. The rod and the staff, the staff represents the Spirit of God. So the Word and the Spirit of God, they comfort and they protect. Man, are people looking for comfort today? Are they looking for protection today? To, to be protected from viruses and all kinds of things? God said, God said, if you allow His Word and His Spirit to, to rule and, and, and take residency on the inside of you, and that's what you turn to and not the fear of other things, said His Word and His Spirit will comfort you and it will protect you. Tell you what, that... That is some solid assurance that will produce great results in your life. I know you're looking for that. I know everybody's looking for that. And it's found in God, in a relationship with God, and us really believing that we can take these verses of Scripture literally. And if he said he'll do it, if he said he'd do it for David, he'll do it for us. He'll do it for you and I. <clears throat> He prepares a feast for us in the presence of our enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. David was saying, you know what? We're on a journey in life, and it's, you know, there's some difficulties right now. There'll be other difficulties in the days ahead that you'll face. But all of these promises in Psalm 23, you can take literally that in the midst of what you face, He's bigger than anything that you face. It's not God, it's not God taking you into something like that and just leaving you. It's not you just rejoicing because of some of the difficulties and the things that you're facing. Nobody likes difficulties, but it's God being God in the midst of what you're in. And He'll lead you out of it to the other side and you'll be that much better and, and you won't even have traces of what, of what other people that aren't willing to learn how to trust God will have on their lives. And I mean, you know, it's not saying that God loves you more than someone else or loves me more than someone else. He loves us all the same. But he's a respecter of developed faith, of trust and confidence in him. What you develop and spend time in on a day-to-day -day basis is going is to determine the outcome of your life. You know, you may have short sprints of success and things going well. That's good. But what really matters is where you're standing at the end. Yeah, we, we want to do what we need to do today. Learn to be disciplined and faithful and have good routines that you're developing in your life. But if God's Word and His Spirit aren't first and foremost in there, then, then you're, you're going through routines of other things that don't produce a comfort and a protection and a peace that, that goes beyond what you think in, the, in, the, in your natural mind. You can do a lot of really good things in the name of God, but if you're, His Word isn't becoming solid, isn't developing a belief system that He is on your side, that He is for you and not against you, there's not anything that comes against you that is God coming at you with something bad. There's no bad in His nature. It's impossible for God to do bad against you to hurt you with something bad, to put something ugly and bad on your life, to teach you something. No, there's a lot of people that have a lot of bad things that happen to their life and, and they're not taught anything. 
They don't learn anything through that. Many people come out of difficult times and situations mad at God. Why? Because they didn't know how to develop a connection and, and, and a right relationship with Him in the midst of what they faced. I'll tell you what you're going through right now, the things in, in, in our nation and around the world that you're dealing with and going through, I, I'm telling you right now, right now is the opportune time to develop a relationship with God, to get to know God in the midst of what you're facing because He'll lead you out on the other side, but He'll continue lead you even when it's good times and if there's something else that's not so good in the days ahead, and there will be, there'll be things that you'll be faced with that'll come at your life, but they're not God, it's not God bringing those things to you. You know, it's circumstance and the enemy and situations that are out there that are just out there. There's just stuff out there. But when God is God in the midst of it, He just continues to lead you through. So really, you know, even when things aren't well, after a while, you don't get all ruffled. You know, you don't get all upset just because something isn't just exactly the way it used to be. You're not upset because your faith and your confidence is in God and you're not moved by what you see or how you feel in any way. <clears throat> in Exodus 23 and verse 22, he said, But if you indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. If you'll do what I say, if you'll hear me, if you'll develop a relationship with me, if you get to know me, be confident in me, you become confident that I'm on your side and I'm not against you. I'll be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. Actually, people that are on your side, things will get better for them just because of your relationship with God. I mean, that's a positive. Right? That's what he's saying right there. But your enemies, he, he'll be an enemy to your enemies. And, and, and things that appear to be against you and, and weighing heavy on your life, he, he'll see those things removed. What a powerful verse. Another verse in Proverbs 16, 7 says, When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Let's think about that. Even his enemies to be at peace. When? <clears throat> when a man's ways please the Lord. What pleases God? Faith, trust, confidence, developed faith. Developing a lifestyle of believing that God is on your side. When it's that way, he said, even your enemies will be at peace with you. You might say you've got enemies as co-workers. You may say that you have enemies in your family, you know, family or extended family. You may say in your church family or just wherever, wherever you're connecting with people. Well, you know, this person's like the enemy. I'm just telling you, people are not your enemy. The enemy is the enemy. <laughs> the devil is the enemy. I, I promise you, it's not people. They're not your problem. And, and I'll just tell you this. Yeah, the enemy will use other people to get to you and, and that he'll work through other people to affect your life. But you know, a lot of times, the things that we think other people are doing to us, they're not really doing that. You know, when all the dust settles, you know, about, I'd say about 90% or more of the time, I mean, there are times when people are, you just have, you know, this, this vendetta against you there. I mean, they are just, they have this attitude and, and they're coming after you and they don't like you and they, they feel like you've done them wrong or maybe you have done them wrong, whatever. But in most cases, I really believe it's the lies of the enemy that he stirs up in your mind to get you to think that people are the enemy and against you and, and when it's really not. And, and when you're developing a relationship with God and you're keeping your focus off of people being your enemy, then what happens is things begin to be at peace. It's really not the way you thought it was because what you were doing by giving into that and focusing on these people that were doing you wrong and talking bad about them, you're, giving, you're adding fuel to the fire. But, but really when you lay those things down and you focus on God, he said here in this verse, he'll make even your enemies to be at peace with and I tell you what, that's a good thing. That's a powerful promise in the Word of God. So I want to end today with this passage, uh, just a few verses that I'm pulling out of this in Romans chapter 8. And, and I want you to meditate on this and, and think about it for, for a little bit. He said um, in verse 31 of Romans 8, and I'm reading this out of the NIV, he said, what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Question mark. 
If God is for you, who can be against you? Well, nobody can answer that except you. I'll answer it for myself, for me and my family and, and people that I'm connected to. I'm telling you today that we're saying nobody can be against us. Not anybody, not anything, not any situation, nothing can be against us. There's a promise in the Old Testament that says that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Well, that's true. Why? Because God's on my side. I'm talking about the God of the universe, the creator of the universe, the one that's got every answer to every situation that you face in life. I'm talking about him, okay? He's on my side. Why would I be afraid of anything else? Nothing else. Verse 35 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or viruses or unemployment or any of those type of things? Uh, or it says danger of any kind or sword? Uh, there's another question. And, and, and separating us from the love of Christ is actually, what, are any of these things, and, it, and again, it's a question that I have to answer. <clears throat> will anything in life, <clears throat> excuse me, will, will anything in life separate me from what Jesus did for me, what he accomplished for me? That's a question and only I can answer it. I'm saying today, by faith in God and trust in God because I know he's on my side, there's not anything in life that's going to separate me from what Jesus did for me. <laughs> settled. I I'm settled with it. I didn't say stuff's not going to come. I'm not saying that there's not challenges and battles that we, that we come up against. I'm telling you, there's nothing out there that will prevail. Not anything. I believe it, and I receive it today, and I will settle for nothing less. You know, that doesn't mean I won't have bad days or difficult days or things when it seems like things are open. No, it, it, everybody experiences those things. But I choose to believe the Word of God, and I choose to believe what God is saying in these verses of Scripture and many others, that He's on my side, and He's not against me. And if He's not against me, then He's for me. And if He's for me, nothing can be against me, not any of these things. And then verse 37, and I'll end with this passage here. He said, no. So, so, so it was answered in verse 37. No. In all these things, this is the Apostle Paul saying this about himself. I'm saying it about myself. You need to say it about yourself. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Paul said, I am convinced. Bert Wimberly is saying today, I am convinced that neither death nor life, angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any other power, height nor depth, or anything else in all of creation would be able to separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, my Lord. Not any of these things. Paul said, I'm convinced. I'm saying, I'm convinced. There's not anything that I face today or I ever will face that'll separate me from what Jesus Christ did and accomplished on my behalf. I believe that. I receive that. I declare that today. And I'm saying for you today, if you will trust him, and you will begin even today to believe that God is on your side, nothing can be against you. And you know what? I'll bet you when I said that right there that, that many of you had five or ten different things that you might be thinking, situations that you might be thinking are actually against you. Well, they can't prevail if you trust in Him. They can't prevail if you develop this I'm convinced attitude that the Apostle Paul had, this I convinced attitude that I'm telling you that I have, if you develop that, there's not anything that can prevail against your life, not anything, or God's a liar. And I'll just tell you this, it's not that God chooses not to lie. The Bible says God can't lie. So if he told us this, as he did, and I'm taking it as truth, you can take it as truth and watch it work for you today. Amen. You know, at this time, at the end of this message, I just like each and every time to give people that may be on here for the first time, maybe you've been watching for the last few weeks, uh, maybe you're watching, you had come to service here live before we actually shut the services down live here in our building, uh, maybe you were coming and maybe you're not born again, um, uh, or, or maybe you've been born again and 
you, you know, you, you've just been discouraged. You've kind of questioned whether you're saved or not. Well, I'm telling you today, uh, there's no greater day than today to be born again. And, and I want to say this about this. You know, to be born again is, is something that it, it's almost like a cliche out there. It, it, it kind of became that for a while. I believe that's changing because of how real that a born again life now is, is producing and people are being established in the word and established in their relationships in God. Not just meeting him through salvation, but growing and developing in their life. And, and I, I'm just going to ask you this. If the God of the universe, the God that created everything, the God that did, has got every answer to every problem or situation in life, if I'm talking about that God, which that's the God of the Bible, why would you not want to be saved? Why would you not want Jesus to be the Savior of your life? So that's why I'm saying today, you need to know, not just hear me say, that God is on your side, you need to believe it. You need to develop it. If you're already born again, you still need to develop it. But, the, but day one begins when you say, Jesus, I need you in my life. Jesus, I want to believe that you're on my side so I don't have to be moved by all the fears and the cares of life. Well, I'm giving you that opportunity now. So wherever you're at, it's very simple. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth, that Jesus is truly Lord, he did what he said, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, he's the only, quote, God, they say there's other gods, that, but he's the only one that rose from the dead and is still alive, and he's seated at the right hand of the Father, and he wants to live inside of you by the person of the Holy Spirit. Well, th there's a lot said there, and if you don't understand that, we'll help you after I lead you in this as you contact us and we'll send you information. We want to help you to understand what, what being born again really is all about. So I just ask you just to bow your head for a moment. It's good to close your eyes and just think about what you're saying. And I just ask you today to repeat this after me. Say this, Father, I believe that Jesus is Lord that he died for my sins and that you raised him from the dead. Father, forgive me for all of my past sins. Jesus, I ask you to be Savior and Lord of my life this day. I thank you for it. Amen. If you said that, you're born again because that's what the Bible says. If you, if you said that, and you believe that what you said is true. There's, a, there's something supernatural that happens when you make that confession to empower you to really believe that. Not because of all the things that you know about it, but just because God said it. And, and if you said that today, if you'll contact us at our website, there, there'll, there'll be ways to, for, for us to, to know who you are, to send you information, and, and we want to help you and be a blessing to you any way that we can. So be safe and be blessed and remember that God is for you and not against you.